Hello everyone! In this video, we'll be walking you through how to work with a multi-choice field from a SharePoint list or document library in Power Automate. In a SharePoint list or within a document library, the column choice has an option to allow multiple choices. And we have a list here. There's a choice column, and we can see that there can be one option selected, two, three, or even more possible. We want to extract those choices into a usable way with Power Automate. So I'm going to go to Automate, and I'm going to create a new flow, and I'll make it automated, meaning it will run when a certain action happens. Just for the purpose of demonstration, I'll do it for when an item is created. Then I'll click on Create. Okay, we're first going to connect up the lists. So this flow runs when an item in the examples list from the automation site is created. Now, for our first action, let's just take a look at what the choice field outputs. I'll add a compose action. And in the inputs, I want to enter the entire choice field, this column, the entire column, and this dynamic content. I'll name the action get choice column value. All right, let's run this. I'll save it and then I'll click on test. Now, just for the first run, I need to do this manually just to get some data in there, but going forward, I'll just rerun it. I'll click on manually, then I'll click on test. As soon as I click on test, it's gonna wait for me to do the trigger action which in this case is to add an item to the list. So I'll do that, and I'll make sure to include more than two choices to the list item. The test flow will trigger, and we can see the results here. When we take a look at the get choice column value action, and under outputs, we can see that we have an array of objects. We want to grab the value from each of these objects, and to do that, we need to use the select action. I'll edit, and I'll add another action, which is going to be the select action. Now when you're mapping a select, you can do a key value pair, but we can also just allow Power Automate to save us some time. We'll choose this little option, and now we can provide a piece of dynamic content. You can do this for any one of the options within the choice field, whatever you wanted. I'll choose value, and Power Automate will immediately put the action inside of a loop. This is just how Power Automate treats every single array object automatically, but we don't want this. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the select action out and then we'll delete the for each action loop. Taking a look at the select action, we can see that it's only selecting the value. Perfect. Let's run this again by choosing save and then by choosing test. And now that we have some data to work with, I can use the automatic option and use some recent data. I'll choose that previous run and choose test. We can see that it ran successfully and when we take a look at the select action in the outputs, now we can see the choices from the item inside of an array by themselves. This would work for one choice, two choices, three, a hundred, however many may have been input. Great, but how do I make these choices inside of the array usable? Like in the format for an email message or a Teams message or even displayed as a string? Well, we want to use the join action, which loops over an array and creates some kind of string for us. I'll edit the flow again, and I'll add another action, the join action. I'll choose it, and I want to select an array, which is the output from the select action. Just make sure you choose the output, and if you see output item, just choose output. Then I can choose however I want to separate out the indices in the array. So if I put a comma space, that would allow me to combine all the choices in a nice string and then send them in an email or Teams message. Great, let's test this again. I'll save it, choose test, and run it again. Looking at the join action, there's our choices in a nicely formatted way in the output. Just make sure you choose exactly how you want them separated, so I included a space after the comma in the select. It doesn't add the comma or the space on the end because the join action knows that this choice is the last one inside of the array. Now I can take this output and place it into any other action going forward inside of the flow. I just need to remember to use the outputs of the join action to display this string here. I can always go back into the join option to change how each item in the array is separated. This will work for choice fields in SharePoint, whether it's from a list or a document library. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, just ask them down below, and check out our guides and resources available in the description.